Hey guys, this is Joshua with Dead Channel, and what if I told you the next major development in the diesel engine was not some new electronic device or a different type of turbo or a different fuel system, but actually holes in your piston? You'd probably think I'm nuts. And you'd probably be right, at least me being nuts, but the actual idea of little holes or dimples or dents, the technical name is turbulators though, in pistons is being developed and is actually in somewhat production by a company called Speed of Air Pistons. And the only way I found out about it because of my viewers. I got several comments and some emails about this company and I'd never heard of them before. And when I first saw it, their claims that these divots, holes, turbulators, as they're actually called, can increase your engine power while decreasing fuel consumption and emissions, not just particulate matter, but also NOx, seemed ridiculous to me. Very skeptical by nature. Not only that, there's lots of companies claiming that such and such device or whatever can do all of these things also. I'm usually of the opinion that they don't always do what they're saying. So what it is, I first I started with their website and they actually have some studies and some independent research. While not a ton, but it's also not an enormous company yet, backing up their claims. So I emailed them and said, hey, do you have any more information? And I actually got to talk to the CEO, Chris, for almost two hours. Now, I want to start off by saying I'm not being paid or compensated in any way. I also have no business interest in the speed of air. But people ask my opinion about diesel engines, so I wanted to give you my opinion of the speed of air pistons. Let's talk about what their actual claims are and what's kind of different about these pistons. Well, of course, all diesel engines have pistons, folks. It's one of the major components in a diesel engine, also a gasoline engine. And the piston, if you don't know, is the part that is basically most exposed to the combustion process. It's really the only moving component that is moving while the combustion process is going on. You also have your cylinder walls and your cylinder head and your valves, but those just kind of sit there. Now the pistons have to be very strong, and in general, they're either flat or they have a dome or recessed area, and they basically just absorb the heat and force generated in the combustion process and push that into the crankshaft. Having little holes or turbulators, which is what I'm just gonna call them from now on, even though it's kind of a weird word, what does that do? Is there anything else that has these? Well, yes, actually, it's kind of, I don't wanna say super common. In fact, golf balls have them. If you've ever seen a golf ball, it's a hard, and it has these little divots and holes in them. Those are turbulators. And this actually helps the golf ball go much farther, apparently. If they weren't on there, they wouldn't go as far. Now, of course, a golf ball is a very different thing than a piston. A piston is not traveling through the air. A piston is not hit by a club. A golf ball needs aerodynamics to move. A piston can't really benefit from aerodynamics because it's not trying to get through the air. It's trying to compress the air. You actually don't want air going around the piston because if it is, that means it's getting into the crankcase and you're losing combustion air. Now, what does that mean? Just because a turbulator can be used on a golf ball, does that mean it has no place on a piston? Well, no. So how does it actually work? Well, the turbulator creates kind of a turbulence area that keeps air, in, in this case, not like a golf ball, fuel from actually contacting the piston. Now, this is the driving force that is supposed to make these much, so much more efficient and burn, basically the idea is that it burns more of the fuel per combustion stroke, which if you burn more of the fuel, you're gonna get less particulate matter and you're gonna increase the efficiency of the engine because you're creating more power with the fuel it's already burning. So it makes sense. Now, speaking with the CEO, Chris, I found out that it's not just these turbulators that are on the piston. These are basically custom-made piston kits for every engine. They also are using gapless rings. They have three different, very expensive, very interesting coatings on both the face of the piston and on the skirts of the piston. So it's not just speed of air, oh, they got holes in their pistons. It's a whole strategy that they've developed with their piston technology. Now you can actually view their pistons and even buy some depending on the engine you have. Places like Summit Racing sell them, some other sites sell them, but 
But Speed of Air, which is a U.S.-based company out of Reno, Nevada, makes them. And they're basically, like I said, they're custom piston kits. Now, speaking with the CEO, he would like to make more pistons for different style diesel engines. But they are not, speaking from him, a get-rich-quick scheme at all because he's not trying to just develop and spread this piston design out to the market as wide as possible. He's actually trying to find people for different model engines like CAD engines, Cummins, uh, Internationals, whatever, to try his pistons out and see how they like them. So if you are interested in that, I would recommend going to the Speed of Air website and contacting them. So what's some of the information they have released? Well, there's a large mining company that actually had used these style pistons in a 3500 series Caterpillar, which if you don't know, that is a very large engine. They generally range, depending on the cylinder arrangement, 2,000 to 3,000 horsepower. And this was in a mining truck and the not speed of air, but the actual mining company itself found that on a teardown, they do scheduled teardown. So it wasn't like the piston fell apart or some other engine damage. The engine itself had less wear for the amount of hours than it normally would using the speed of air pistons. So. Like I said, that's a third party, independent, non-affiliated group with Speed of Air that said that. They've also got a couple studies with this same piston. And they also, when doing the research, they try to not change other things. They don't want you changing your injectors, your turbo, if you're gonna be testing with these because they wanna see an honest review of what the piston did in the engine without other modifications. Because if you change your turbo and your injectors and all this other stuff, and the pistons, you're not getting a fair assessment. So one thing I wanted to discuss was this, which is under their R&D section. And this is an Olsen Ecologic report they did on a modified and stock 5.9 Cummins diesel engine with the speed of air pistons, both in a modified engine and in a stock engine application. Now, like I said, this is on their website and this is, like I said, a sample size of one folks, but still one sample. So. You can go through, like I said, it's on their website, so it's easy to find. And if you go through, it actually has graphs of basically their brake specific fuel consumption, horsepower comparisons. Like I said, if you check on the right, it kind of is showing you the stock versus modified uh, SOA is speed of air, and then just modified without using the speed of air pistons. Some of the results are very similar, similar on horsepower, if you look at the modified and speed of air. But some of these are, there's quite a dramatic difference. So if you look at the stock versus the stock engine with the speed of air, in this NOx emission test, the speed of air is actually significantly less on the parts per million in NOx, almost through the entire um, RPM range. So also with the hydrocarbons, you can see stock versus stock, also modified versus modified with the speed of air. Significant differences here. And they did this, this is, pro this is probably the best type of test to do. It'd be nice if we could get results like this on many different engines. And as you can see in general, it does better. It's more, more power, less fuel consumption, and lower emissions using the speed of air pistons. Like I said, not every single data point says that, but in general, that holds true on this study. So what are some potential problems I might see with these piston designs? Well, first off is, and this may be just due to them not having a large manufacturing base for them already, is that they're quite expensive. Current price for a set of pistons on Summit Racing for just the pistons for a smaller, I believe either the Power Stroke or the Cummins 5.9 is around $3,600 for just the piston. Now that is with the rings also, but that is quite expensive. Uh, usually you can get almost a full rebuild kit for that much money for those engines, you know, not including injectors and cylinder head, but that is one of the takeaways from this is currently they're quite expensive, but they're also, like I said, not a huge manufacturing base yet. Now, the thing is though, if their claims are true, and this doesn't apply to everyone and everything, obviously if you have a diesel little Kubota tractor that you drive for 15 hours a year, it's not gonna make sense, but let's say it does save you 10% on fuel. 
Well, in a driver application where you're just going back to work, it might not make sense. But in an on-highway application or a commercial setting where it runs a lot, the fuel savings could be significant if they're up to what the standards are that the company's claiming. I mean, fuel costs are generally the highest cost for a truck application. So if you could reduce those by 10%, the cost of the pistons would pay for themselves in probably months, maybe a, a month, depending on how much you use the vehicle. So that is something to consider. Now, I don't want this video to go on forever, folks. Like I said, I have not installed these pistons myself. I haven't done, I haven't had them in a vehicle I own or had a customer that's had them installed to really get a hands-on impression, but I have talked to the CEO. I've seen them. I've done I've looked at their studies. Studies are very interesting. It seems like an open honest company. Like I said, I'm not being paid by them. I just find it very interesting and I'm sure some of the people watching this hopefully find this interesting. Like I said, if you want to know more about it, go over to Speed of Air, their website, and do some more research. Maybe you would benefit from their products, but go ahead and check them out, folks. Thanks for watching.